49. One chick fully feathered, two adults. 40. Empty nest. Last one. One chick fully feathered, two adults. Horrible system forecast from the east later. Yeah, I saw that. Finley! Hey, kiddo. You arrive okay then? I did, thanks. And I forgot how cold it was over here. So aside from cold, how is it? Windy. Why couldn't you have been born in, like, the Caribbean instead of Fair Isle? Ah, uh, you know, I'd miss the rain. I'm sorry I can't be there. How's that pile of paperwork going anyway? I'm getting through it. Is that music I can hear? Yeah, we're just about to go in. Well, tell... Your grand and granddad that I'm asking for them and have a good time with Angus. And, you know, you... Behave yourselves. We will. Love you. And, and I'll... Hey. How's your dad? I'm fine, I think. Yeah. You forgot to ask, didn't you? Sort of, but he sounded fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. There you are, son. Martin. Happy birthday. Cheers. 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 How many times have you and your wife wished each other a happy anniversary today? Haven't you heard? Absence makes the heart grow fond of texting. You're like a pair of Canada geese. Honk, honk to you, my sad, unpaired friend. <laughs> unpaired I may be. Sad about it? No. Peter, could I have a word? Are you lot gonna join in the festivities, or are you just gonna stay in here like a bunch of antisocial lab rats? Bit busy right now, Frank. Working in here isn't a judgment against dancing through there. Yes, but it doesn't hurt to let the islanders know that we're reasonably normal and not just totally obsessed with their bird life. No, I am totally obsessed with their bird life. So am I. Anna, please. It just helps. Oh, for God's sake. He wanted a word, Anna? Uh, yeah, um, you two go ahead. First drink on me. First? How many do you have in mind? Well, as many as it takes until we lose count. Peter. Well? Close the door. Close the door and lock. Just close, we'll be fine.
Drink, please. Uh, I'll get it. You're all right, Finley. I'll take it from you. Little tip. Better to chatter up away from the husband. Can you pay us? And say that again. I take it. Aye, just about. Good to see you, Johnny. You too, Dad. Uh, this is my colleague, Detective Sergeant Allison McIntosh. No, it's all right. I'm not always this shade of puce. Jimmy's mother's the same. It's the boat for her every time. Right, now, let's get these things loaded up. Well, given how much time we've already lost, it's probably best that we just crack on. Did you manage to keep everybody away from the laboratory? I got Donnie down there, and he's put everything in lockdown. And Isabel is with the family. Now, the weather's probably going to shut Larrick down for 24 hours at least. 
So we're on our own, Dad. We're all devastated, Jimmy. I know it. There hasn't been an unlawful killing on Fair Isle for 70 years, and even that was caused by the Luftwaffe. People are scared. Well, you're the late preacher, Dad. Just do your best to reassure them. Well, hopefully, you'll be able to wrap this up pretty sharpish. One of the scientists at the center hasn't been seen since last night, Peter Latimer. What does that mean? I'm just saying that if I was a bookie, I wouldn't take any bets on who did it. Probably just as well you're not a bookie then, Dad. I well. Can you take Tosh down to the harbour and see if there's any boats missing? Mm -hmm. But can you take Cass home first? Sure. And if a boat is missing, Main Island Coast Guard? Aye. Well, if he's headed north, that alone must certainly mean a recovery operation. That stretch between here and Shetland is notorious. Even locals like myself struggle to navigate it. Well, I'm, I'm sure they're aware of that, Dad. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I help you with that? Uh, I I'm Finlay Caulfield. I, I was Anna's assistant. W we've been waiting for you, actually. We thought you uh, wouldn't get here before they shut down the transits. I'm Detective Inspector Perez. Could I see Dr. Blake's body now, if you don't mind? is in the lab, uh, just through here. Yeah, I'll be fine from here, thanks. Well, there's no vessels missing. Really? OK. So then this Latimer is still on the island. Is that a good thing or bad? Who owns these huts? Well, uh... That's, the, that's the, the fisherman there, and this belongs to the research center. You shouldn't we be getting straight back? Just need to check these. He could be hiding until dark. Yeah, well, there is that. Hey, wake up. <laughs> hey, Tony. Good to see you. And you, big man, and you. Just wish it was under slightly different circumstances, all here. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Tosh. Sir, there aren't any boats missing, and there's no sign of anyone trying to hide nearby either. Okay, keep 
looking. Um, um, listen, I want you to ask my dad if we can set up an incident room in the village hall. Also, I've made a start to the crime scene, but I just need to check something, and then I'm going to start feeding information. It's really Sandy, okay? He's gone out for a cigarette. Uh, I thought this might prove useful. Am I right in saying that visiting researchers would be given a front door key? Uh, that's correct. And so who would have a full set? That would be the three permanent members of staff. That's the Blakes and myself. Uh, they're hung up in the office. And were they still there this morning? Yes. Are these bedrooms? Uh, yes, um, that's mine. Um, that's Bill's, Latimer's, that's Anna's, and that's Frank's. So, Dr. Blake and her husband, they slept apart? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry, Frank. Joe. Right, well, in the old days, if I thought of hiding, I'd, I'd head for the lighthouses up at Screw or at Scadden. Good vantage points over the whole island. By the old days? Well, they've both been automated for years, so they're completely locked up. Your man couldn't get in. And could he break in? Unlikely. Mm. And you still want to check them out? Please. Right. Good. Good. Listen, uh, thanks for standing guard. Oh, not at all. Not at all. I'm only happy to help. Isn't it really a bit weird, though, isn't it? All right. Listen, I just wanted to check something with you. Has anybody been in or out of that lab since the body was found? No. No, since I was there, no. You sure? I'm positive, eh? Right. OK. Isabel and Angus are looking forward to seeing you. Oh, I, 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 did he like his present? Oh, I loved it, Jimmy. You know, I know I've not been the most hands-on a god for others. No, no, listen, we understand. Right, you and me will get a chance at a proper catch-up later, eh? Aye, aye, sure, aye. Aye, you get on now. I'll see you later. Right. severe bruising at the left temple. But not on the right. And there's another bruise on the right cheek. But there's... There's no other signs of physical injury. OK, got that. There's signs of a violent struggle within the room. But there's no blood spatter on the floor or the walls. And there's no blood emanating from anywhere on the body. Dr. Blake's computer's still running, which suggests that she didn't have time to shut it down before the attack. And it's password protected. OK. OK. Some sort of altercation has taken place during which Anna Blake has received a severe blow to the left temple, and she's died. But the question is, with what? was popular with the locals. Well, Anna was all about the work, and Frank looked after everything else, but fair play to her. 
She kept this island's profile right up there all over the world, and that put money in everybody's pocket. Who's that? That's him. That's Peter Latimer. Right, pull in here. Peter Latimer? My name's Detective Sergeant McIntosh. If you're thinking of running, Mr Latimer, number one, I was a cross-country champion. And number two... Why would I think of running? Where have you been? Andy, that's 20 minutes. No, no, they're, they're coming, they're coming. Have you got them yet? I have got them. Finally, I will send them straight to Inverness. Well, I need anything that illuminates the choreography of our final moments. I also want you to pull the phone records for Anna's lab phone, because I want to know who she was talking to in the last few weeks. And you want her mobile too? Yes, if I can find it. All right. OK. Good. Sir? Posh. I've got Latimer. Where was he? We found him walking back to the centre. Apparently, he's researching changing migration patterns. He told me he left the centre early because he received news that eight Victorine warblers had been reported flying south, and he didn't want to miss them if they flew over the island. It's apparently why he stayed out so long, just waiting. Did he have binoculars, a camera, a notebook? He claims he slipped on a path on the cliff top, lost his grip on his backpack, and watched it tumble into the sea. Well, then he wouldn't have known that Anna was dead. He gave no indication that he did. Did you say anything to him? All he knows is that there was an incident at the centre. Good. I've asked him to wait alone in one of the reading rooms for the moment. OK. Well, I'll speak to him after I've spoken to Anna's family. Your father made a couple of calls and says the village hall's ours for as long as we need it. Excellent. Is a connected man, your dad? Yeah, well, I suppose when you live in an island, there's 70 people being connected isn't as big a deal as you'd think. Plus, he is the late preacher, and that gives him a certain status which he does enjoy. Right. I'll talk to Frank. You search Latimer's room, because if he did kill Anna, then he almost certainly left the centre of it early so that you could dump whatever he killed her with into the Atlantic. But see if you can find anything else in there that links him to Anna. Mr and Mrs Warren? Yes, that's right. If there's anything we can do. Well, at some point, my colleague, Detective Sergeant McIntosh, is going to have to take separate statements from you both regarding where you were last night. Is that really necessary? We were together the whole evening. Won't be as quick as we can. Thanks, Isabel. They're both in shock. It's good to have you home, Jimmy. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm going to have to ask you a few questions, Frank. It's probably best if we do it now. Joe, would you mind waiting outside?
police given any indication when we can return to our rooms? Tessa needs to lie down. This has been a terrible shock. Did she know Anna? Did she have to, to be horrified by what happened to her? Uh, the police have told us to remain downstairs until told otherwise. Uh, w would your wife like a cup of tea? It would only upset her stomach. Something to eat? I could uh, make her a sandwich. Thanks. I doubt she would keep it down. Well, I wasn't going to fill it full of puffin shit. Super silly as ours. When was the last time that you saw your wife? When I turned in. And what time was that? Can you remember? About one. Was the dance finished by then? Everybody gone home? But by one o'clock, as far as you know, the only people who were left in the center are the people who were living and working here. As far as I know. And none of those people would have had any reason to attack your wife. She was my wife. I should have protected her. Can you name those people for me? I'm sorry, Frank. I know this is insensitive. I just have to ask. Can I get you a glass of water or something? No. No, no, I'm fine. Okay. You want me to name the people who are staying here, okay? Yes, please. Okay. It was myself, Anna, our son Joe, Peter Latimer, Finley Caulfield, Bill Warren, and his wife who turned up to surprise him on their wedding anniversary. Okay? Thank you. Did you often go to bed before your wife? You don't become preeminent in your field without putting in the hours. So she worked hard? Ferociously hard. Did you resent that? In our field, we don't resent those who are cleverer or more insightful than us. We applaud it. We're grateful for it. Because in the end, it moves us all forward. So it was because of her hours then that you slept apart? But don't waste your time by reading anything into that. Our marriage was fine. So where was Anna when you said goodnight to her? In the lab, working with Peter Latimer. Working? With all due respect, shouldn't you be talking to somebody who wasn't in the bed when she was killed? I mean, wouldn't that be more useful? Was there anything unusual in your wife working with Peter Latimer late? There was nothing unusual. She oversaw all the research here. And he's a postgraduate student. Right, so you locked up. Yes. And you said goodnight to your wife? Yes. And you went to bed? Yes. Now go and find out who killed her before I do. Excuse me. Send. The pathologist had a look at your photographs. She's got a possible cause of death for you. Extradural hemorrhage. It's caused when a blow to the temple damages blood vessels running to the top of the brain. This results in bleeding within the skull. And if left unchecked, it simply pushes the brain down through the base of the skull and onto the top of the spinal column. See, it's the base of the brain that controls the breathing, and when it's squashed, it just simply stops working. Any word on Anna's phone records yet? Hopefully on their way to me now. All right. Well, while we're waiting, I've got a couple of names that I want you to run through. The PNC. OK. The Dr. Frank Blake, 
is Emeritus Professor of Biology at Birmingham University. Frank Blake. Birmingham Uni. And Peter Latimer, postgraduate student in avian biology at Oxford University. Peter Latimer, Oxford. Now, I'll get Tosh to email you the rest, and then you get back to me as soon as you hear anything, OK? Will do. Excuse me. Are you with the police? I'm Detective Inspector Perez. Excellent. And perhaps you can tell me what's going on and, and why I'm being cooped up in here. OK. Well, let's not talk out here. What's going on is a murder investigation. A murder? Yes. What, uh, on the island here? Dr. Blake was found murdered in a lab this morning. Anna? I didn't say which Dr. Blake. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I, I just assumed we... No, you're right. It was Anna, I'm afraid. Christ almighty. What happened? Well, her body was found in a lab this morning by uh, Finley Caulfield. And I have to say, your absence from the building seemed to cause quite a stir. No, oh, I explained to um, uh, your colleague. Yes. Uh, I... Ictorine Warblers. Yeah. If the sighting was correct, it's significant cause for concern. Well, it's not as significant as the woman you've been working alongside for the last few months being found dead in her lab, surely? No, no, of course not. I, I was just trying to explain the significance. Sorry, I, um... I, I, I think I'm, I'm in shock. Can I ask you something? How did you find out about the arrival of these birds? Warblers? Was it email or was it a text or what was it? Um... It was on a, an RSS feed. And did anyone else get this feed? Um, no, 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 I don't think so. Bring it up for me. I think I should speak to a solicitor. There's a storm in the mainland. You're not going to be able to get a solicitor here for at least 48 hours. Why don't you just talk to me? I didn't kill Anna Blake. I didn't say you did. No, but you think I did. You don't know what I'm thinking. One thing's for sure. You didn't leave this building this morning to spot eight birds prematurely flying south for the winter. So, don't sell my intelligence. A solicitor. I mean, I've told him with the weather coming in, he's unlikely to be able to get one for at least 48 hours, but he's adamant. So do we take that as an admission of guilt? His backpacking equipment aren't here. He maintains he didn't kill her. Although, you know, I didn't can turn into it. I didn't mean to. Mm. But then it's possible he's telling the truth about that and lying about why he was. I thought I asked everybody to stay downstairs. Uh, there was something I needed for work. So quite urgent then. Urgent enough to disobey a direct police instruction during a murder inquiry. Well, I just thought it wouldn't matter if I, I nipped up here briefly and, and got what I needed and, and Does matter. Back. What did you come up for? Well, I, I, I thought it was up here, but... Finley, you're beginning to annoy me just a wee bit. Just answer the question. Well, I, it must be down in the lab. What, the memory card? That one that you're holding in your left hand? You can stand there looking Gleka all day if you want, I don't mind, or you can give me the card. Look, it's, it's not what it looks like. If you're going to think in your feet, you're going to have to be a wee bit quicker than that. 
Don't you even think about swallowing that. Trust me, on the way out, it'll hurt you a lot more than it will me. Now, for the last time, give me the card. See, now, why would you do that? Take a minute. Just think about your boy. Last thing he needs is his old man in a jail cell right now. <laughs> I'm not stupid, you understand? I'm not stupid! I take it everybody in the island knows about the killing. What do you think? People are scared, Jim. Farrell doesn't do crime, remember? Don't you miss that, Jimmy? Sure. Who wouldn't miss that? So what do you prefer about Lyric, then? Honestly. Go on. You know, that's where I met Fran. That's where Cassie was born. That's where Dad lives. And plus, it's about the right size for me. You know, if you want people to know your business, then you can share it with them. And if you don't, you don't have to. Mm. You have no choice here. Hi. Does he not know how busy you are? Angus? Jimmy's here. Jim, what? Joe Blake. What about him? Any idea why he would come back during term time? How does he mean? When did he come back? Last night. Right. I didn't know that. Come on. Coffee? Yeah, yeah. There he is. My favourite godson. Your only godson. <laughs> How are you? Good. 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 Thanks. Thanks so much for the iPad, by the way. That was the right, the right thing. Right thing. Bloody brilliant. Bloody expensive. Ah, you're only 18 once. Exactly. I remember when I was 18. Remember when you were 18, Jimmy? Hey, <laughs> 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 <coughs> right, Angus. I've got a problem. Well, actually, I've got two problems. Three of you include not being able to count. This is problem number one. That's easy. They don't usually work without the camera. No, 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 no. Seriously, no. Can you get the photographs that were on that? Huh? 
Hi there. My wife, Mary, thought you might be hungry after losing your breakfast on the way over. Uh, nothing heavy, just food for a tender dummy. That's very kind of her. I'll leave it with you. How could someone do that, a beautiful and intelligent woman? Yeah. I just pray that it wasn't an islander. Does that really matter, Mr. Perez? For us, it does. This community survives on mutual trust. This could completely destroy it. Who would have thought it, eh? Our old village hall and incident room. Well, needs must, I'm afraid. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Yes, Sandy? Josh. According to Anna Black's phone records, two weeks back, she called the airline flying between Fair Isle and Tingle. He's on a diet. So I requested details of any flights booked in her name, and there were two same-day return tickets to Tingle on the 23rd of last month, a week and a half ago. And the name of the second passenger? Well, oh, it's damaged. Yeah. Well, as long as the flash memory on the card is intact and the internal circuit board isn't cracked, then it should be possible to retrieve the files. Let's see. Come on, Angus. How long is this going to take? Wow. You're back on Fair Isle now, Uncle Jimmy. A land where time doesn't just stand still. It frequently loses its internet connection. Ah, yeah. oh, here we go. Uncle Jimmy? Why? You haven't told me about problem number two. Aye, I'll speak to you later. He did indeed. He ghost again. Do you think it's worth getting him to take a look at Anna's laptop unofficially? If I can't crack it, I'm just going to leave it with him and just let his natural geek like curiosity run its course. Oh, so, Sandy called. Uh -huh. Anna Blake booked two same day return flights to Lerick a week and a half ago. Why two? One for herself, the other for Peter Latimer. And why would Anna and Peter Latimer? go to the main island just for the day. I can't imagine. Why would a beautiful woman married to an older man want to get away from the prying eyes of Fair Isle to spend an afternoon alone with an attractive student? If that was the case, they could just have slipped behind the bike sheds. Why go all the way to the main island? Do you think? I mean, Frank maintains that the reason that they slept separately was because she worked all hours. Yeah, but he would say that, wouldn't he? And I did get the impression that he did love her very much. Yeah, but did she still love him? What is he in his fifties? No offence, but it would be like me fancying you. Thanks very much. The fact that he loved her like he did means he could have been capable of killing her in a jealous rage. He's got it in him. If we hadn't come in when we did, Latimer could be dead. Before you go too far down that road, just have a look at the contents of Finley's camera. If he was the last Ectorine warbler on Earth, this number of pictures would be excessive. Mm -hmm. He's totally obsessed. The only one he doesn't have is Anna dead. Was she sexually assaulted? Well, we'd need the results from the post-mortem, but it didn't look like it, no. <sighs> right, let's say it's Finley. He's been here for the best part of a year. Why last night? What was the trigger? Has a few drinks at the party for Dutch Courage. Comes on to Anna in the lab, gets rebuffed. Humiliated and angry. Well, the fact that he tried to destroy the memory card gives us enough to arrest and question him at least.
That's me heading out, Billy. In this way, then? I got a lead down Finlay Caulfield. I'm going to check it out. I'll not be long. Where is she? Where's Mum? They took her away. Where? They moved her somewhere safe. Then they're gonna take her to the mainland. I want to see her. I don't think that's a good idea. It's not your decision to make. I think it is. I'm your father. Be good if you'd acted like a bit sooner. Listen, I don't want to argue with you. I'm just trying to protect you. I, I don't want your last memory of your mother to be. Her corpse? Yeah. You can't control the way I feel. Gina? Detective Constable Wilson, might I have a word? What about? Finlay Caulfield. Maybe we could take a seat if you have a minute. Thank you. I'm sorry for bringing up the past like this. It's all right. What do you want to know? You met Finlay at a singles club here at the library. That's right. And you went out on a date? Just a drink, really. Wasn't interested in seeing him after that, so I gently knocked it on the head. The male ego does bruise easily. But by that time, he had your email address, is that right? Yep. That was a mistake. And he started pestering you? He wanted to see me again. I just kept saying no till the emails stopped. Then after a month, I started getting emails from a different address, each one wordless, but with a different attachment. Gina, what was in the attachments? Photographs of me going about my life. You know, normal stuff, but it was creepy. I was completely unaware he was watching me like that. Did he ever threaten you physically? No. Never. And now? No more emails? No. Thankfully. Why do you think they stopped? So, what was her answer? She said that after receiving a police caution for harassing her, she'd had he'd left town. For the job in Fair Isle at the research centre. Hey. That's great work, Sandy. Have you heard anything yet about where Anna Blake and Peter Latimer checked into for their secret tutorial? Not yet, but it will take a while for everyone to check their records. OK, well, just remember, they might have used... False names. 
So while you're waiting for something to happen, start trawling through the CCTV. Between the times of their flights in and out of Tingwall. Will do. Anything that'll help. Get a confession out of Peter Latimer before his solicitor arrives is going to be great. Because, you know, there's 70 souls on a very small island, Sandy, and one of them's a murderer. People are getting scared. Okay? Bye then. Right. Bring me Finley Caulfield, would you? Finley? I also have an interest in classic cars. I might look for something in the uh, open baby. Hi, Dad. What about you? I missed you today. I missed you too. I'm sorry about that. It's OK. You can't help it. I'll make it up to you. You don't have to. No. That Joe was coming back to the island last night. Why would I? Well, no, I just thought maybe he might have mentioned it on Facebook or Twitter. OK, we both know they're the only two social networking sites you've ever heard of. Uh -huh. I know Joe, but we're not really friends. Ask your father when they want their tea. Nan wants to know what time you want to have. In God's name. Tosh! What was that? I don't know. We can go and have a look in a Land Rover. We don't have a key, and I can't find anyone. No, I'm afraid our keys will be in the ignition. Sounded like it came from Donny Brook. I didn't grow up here, remember? Be less specific. <sighs> that way. Be careful. What's happened? Breathing. Oh, dear God. Any closer to finding out who actually killed her? I mean, it's an island. How difficult can it be? For the sake of this wee lump of rock, Jimmy, catch this person. I never would have hurt Anna, and, and I, I never hurt Gina. Scared Gina, though. But what's going on? Why did you question Donnie? Talk to me about Joe Blake now. I need to speak to you. OK. I know who killed my mother. 
Catch the final part next Tuesday night at nine. An actress, Alison O'Donnell, who plays Tosh, describes filming on Fair Isle online in a BBC TV blog. The first ever state visit to Britain by an Irish president among the stories on the BBC News at ten next. One on BBC Four hitting the enemy from within, how revolution became a weapon in the First World War.